Hey folks, welcome back to Let's Play Panzer... No, Allied General. That's right. I'm serious, JG. I'm so used to the idea that I can't play Allied General for YouTube, having been trying for about 10 years. And by trying, I mean like once every three years I would spend an hour or two trying to get it to work. But I'm serious, JG. That's not quite true, because uh, I spent a decent amount of time trying to figure out how to get the PS1 port to work, and it's just such a terrible port that uh, I couldn't tell if it was... Uh, just the game being awful or recording stuff also not wanting to work. But thanks to uh, uh, Comrade Lethal Feline, which is what I would call him if we run the Russia campaign, but we're not, we are able to play. And the last time, in fairly short order for the final mission, uh, we beat the North African campaign. So now it's time to move on to Western Europe. And uh, I can't, I don't remember how much this I described last time. I'm in an odd spot. I think the last time I played this game, I may have been part of Thanksgiving vacation, uh, visiting visiting the folks. I know no, that's not true. That that is true of Age of Empires. I had this big long gap. I think I, I did record a little bit of this after I got back from Thanksgiving. But the this uh, and probably the next video at least are recordings I've done on Christmas break. Wow, this is literally Christmas Eve, and I'm sitting down playing a little Allied General during a lull when there's no one else in the house, and it's just me on my own. Looking super looking forward to Christmas Day. Don't really have a lot of presents that I'm excited about receiving personally, but like you get to a point as an uncle where like you're excited to see what the kids think of what you bought. And um I got little BB a uh a, a plush of Pluto from Disney that I think he will like, but more more and, and his uh his older cousin, uh my niece I don't know what's going on with them, man, the planning. Like, my uh, sister reached out to me on text and asked me what kind of video con like, she said, uh, name redacted is old enough. We think it's, we think, it, it, you know, we could get our video game console or something. And as it turns out, she, she went to my dad, the, the, the big money guy. The family got him to buy that. But the question was, which one should we get? And I was like, oh, yeah, I mean, she's like eight. You're going to want to get her a Switch. You don't want to get her a PS5 or an Xbox. You, you want to get her a Switch. She's eight. And, um, not knocking the switch. I'm sure you, you could be an adult gamer who has a switch and thinks it's fantastic, but it seemed like the thing for kids. Uh, but then they went and got her the switch and this isn't my dad's fault. This is what he was told to do. He got her, he didn't get her like the Mario Kart eight edition switch. He just got her a switch with no games. And then I guess the only game my sister, her mother got her was, uh, like bluey, which, uh, I hadn't looked into bluey until just recently because, uh, I bought Bean a copy of Bluey for Christmas because it was on her list. And Bobo was kind of offhandedly texting me the other day saying, yeah, because I mentioned, yeah, I, I don't know which one of us mentioned Bluey, but he was like, yeah, apparently Bluey is as bad as the, uh, oh man, I forget what the actual term is, a video game that is using a registered like intellectual property. He's like, it's as bad as the intellectual property games of old. <laughs> Because back in the day, like if you if you went out and bought a NES game that had like a popular movie on it, you could be pretty sure you're going to get a shit game because most of the best NES games were coming out of Japan, and they weren't the ones buying the rights to uh, U.S. properties for the most part. I don't know what I'm talking about anymore, but um, yeah. So like I, I at the last minute, having already bought her like Harry Potter dolls and shit, I was like, ah crap, I got to make sure my niece, like if this is the first time she's ever going to own a video game system, she needs to have some good opening titles. And they didn't have Mario Wonder, so I got her. Zelda Tears of the Kingdom and Metroid uh, Prime Remake, because I, I've never played either game, but I was like, yeah, Metroid, yeah, she's a girl. She should have a game that is a good, like, a really good action game uh, where the protagonist is a kick-ass uh, female. That's a, That seemed to me like a good idea. But then the other one was like Zelda. I was like, yeah, like, I have heard enough about how great the current Zelda games are to regret the fact that I'll probably never play a Zelda game again because I'm never going to go out and buy a Nintendo-owned system uh, just to play Zelda games. Uh, and they wouldn't come out on anything else. So I'll probably never play a Zelda game. But I keep hearing how awesome they are. So I go out and buy these and get home, and then I'm like, I probably should have read a little bit about it before I go. And the first thing I read about Tears of the Kingdom is people bitching that it's too hard. And I just bought it for my 8-year-old movies. <laughs> anyway, that's that's why you tuned in, right? To hear about Christmas presents? No. So, uh, it, uh, it's Christmas Eve, but, oh, yeah, but no, the one I'm really looking forward to is, is my, my nephew, uh, Bronco. I got him various gifts, but I went out and found some, some mail order thing that does, like, uh, non-copyright or copyright-adjacent toys of, 
because uh, Bronco uh, ends up watching a lot of YouTube. Because there's a ton of, like, crap YouTube products out there for kids. And he likes something called Mikey and JJ, which is a bunch of Minecraft footage being narrated over. Uh, and the two characters, one of them is the one whose camera view you're always seeing, so I don't really get that strong an impression of what he's meant to look like. But his sidekick is Mikey the Turtle, who's this silly, like, sort of derpy turtle who's always the one who falls into traps and has to get rescued. He's the goofus and gallant of their little world. Uh, and, and this this place has a character called Derpy Turtle, which is clearly Mikey the Turtle, but is not copyrighted. And I probably shouldn't be talking about it, because the massive audience who sees this video may go and report to Mikey and JJ, who don't have any fucking licensed merchandise. <laughs> so it's their fault. But he's going to get a little action figure of, uh, of a, a YouTube Minecraft character. And uh, I don't think he knows that this thing exists, or he would have asked for it. So I'm really hoping that it... I've seen it, but it's still in the box. I'm hoping it's not like a piece of shit that falls apart as soon as you try to do anything with it, but I guess we'll find out. What you're probably trying to find out right now is when the fuck am I going to get on with it? And the answer is now, because it's time to start the Western Europe campaign. Although we're going to approach it in a slightly special way. I may or may not have described this last time, but there's a couple, there's like just two scenarios that you can play exclusively as the Americans. And then, so so for England, you got three forces you play as in this game. The UK, the US, and the Soviet Union. I guess the USSR. So it's all the all-you team. And um, all the campaigns we just played, including one or two scenarios, all the scenarios we just played, including one or two scenarios where I just showed you the map, but we didn't play it, like Cairo. Those are UK exclusive. And then in the Western European campaign, you can play as the US or the UK. And when the time comes to at attack, I guess it's the Mannerheim line or whatever it's called, the uh, what, the, the uh, line of fortifications in Western Germany. Um, then there's there's a mission that only the U.S. can do where they attack, I believe, the north of the line. It's a mission only the U.K. can do where they attack the south of the line. But I might have those flipped. But either way, yeah, they have the it's it's a it's a matching campaign where there's one scenario that's exclusive to either side, but otherwise they're identical. Except that there is a little micro mini Western European, like North Africa campaign for uh, America that documents the Americans landing and fighting their way, like landing in Western North Africa and fighting their way past German defenses to link up with the British and drive them out of North Africa. So we're actually going to do that. And then we're going to switch back to playing as the Brits because we've already got core units as the British. I'm an American. I'm very proud of what my, uh, you know, what Americans did in World War II. But we're playing as the British anyway, just because I want to carry through the core units. And uh, I don't get to be proud of them in the same way, but I mean, I think there's a lot, you know, <laughs> British soldiers uh, made great sacrifices in World War II as well. So let's honor both by having me incompetently play through the first two American-only scenarios of the Western European campaign. This will involve me selecting America, America and then um, switching over through the use of save games to Britain later. But now it's fine for America. Fuck yeah. Freedom is the only way. Yeah. And again, because there's four corners, we will see America, the UK, the USSR, and France. Because... I'd like to have a French campaign in this, but it would be pretty brutal. It's assuming it starts with you getting, like, completely fucking owned uh, in 1940. Counter -strike. November 1942. The unrelenting German army has established Fortress Europe, an enormous empire with daunting defenses. Mm -hmm. But the German war machine has stalled. In the Soviet Union, the indomitable Russian people exact a huge price from the invading Axis armies. In North Africa, heroic British troops have blocked the German drive for Middle Eastern oil. Across the Atlantic, America has joined the fight, giving the Allies a massive infusion of strength. It would strength. be a little weird in a Western uh, propaganda video the to open by to talking about the Russians. Russians. They're kind of an afterthought. You start by talking about the British and the Americans. 
first, the Allies must drive the Axis out of North Africa, clearing a path to the soft underbelly of Europe. It's soft, all right. Soft and downy fresh. They are making preparations for a great northern hammer blow. Thus, the Axis will face a two-pronged counteroffensive. We, making this uh, video, know about Operation Overlord. It's not classified at all. Men may storm the battlements of Fortress Europe. From these beachheads, the Allies will have to take back Europe, city by city, town by town, until the war is won. I really do like the. I uh, like. I'm teasing them a bit, but I really love the uh, the intro cinematics for each scenario. So Panzer Gen I don't remember if there was a Panzer General 3. If it if there was, it didn't sell as well, it didn't catch off as well, because Panzer General 2 is one I would always see recommended on good old games. And they kind of moved away, as I recall, from the scenario based, like, you know, a lot of cinematics. They they had voice acted stuff similar to Panzer General 1. And in Panzer General 2, it's called Panzer General 2, but it kind of is the sequel to both games because you have scenarios playing as Germany and as uh, the UK, the US, and uh, Soviet Union. But they sort of like, the fake newsreel thing is really the way to present it, and I only wish the fake newsreel of the Russians had, like, a Russian accent and was... Uh, because they present it like it's a, it's not a parody per se, but it's like an homage to the old uh, American newsreels. And I was like, yeah, but the Russians had newsreels too, and they had their very own distinctive tone. I mean, newsreel is not exactly the same as like you know the old um, tractor films, but uh, there there's a there's a flavor uh, to the Russian propaganda where it's not just talking about driving back the the invaders. It's also or it's also talking about like you know peasants and workers uniting and like like there's communist overtones to it that are interesting as well but uh no this is this is done and, and we're ready to move on and uh the only point i was going to make is that when i nitpick the, these things i love the the uh cinematics of this game and it's like oh that doesn't make sense if it's really a cold if it's really a uh, cold war if it's really a world war ii uh newsreel film they wouldn't know that operation overlord's coming it's like shut up jg they're just explaining the premise of what's coming with the with the newsreel flavor and i really do enjoy it. <clears throat> i really do enjoy the presentation of this game a lot it, there's a lot of little things that this game does um that i think were like great touches and improvements over panzer general but panzer general is just much better remembered in part because of a bunch of weirdos who want to play as the germans all the time let's move on the big brass have given the landing tomorrow their final okay. G2 says that they think we'll succeed in surprising the Axis forces. I have information for you on strategic objectives and what we know about enemy positions. Since they haven't fought Americans in this war, they should be in for a big surprise. They're in for a big surprise. Oh, and, and by far my least favorite of the um, staff sergeants who brief you as the general on what's happening, the American guy... He, he just sounds extra generic and boring. Like, I don't know what they're going for with him. And uh, the same is true in Panzer General 2, where you have... Uh, Panzer General 2 returns to Panzer General's format of having, like, like a five-star equivalent briefing you uh, on what's happening. So you are getting orders from a higher-ranking officer to go out and actually execute. You're like a three-star... I'm going to expose my ignorance. If you're an actual general in command in the field, you're probably a... You're probably a two-star or a three-star. You could be a four-star. Uh, five stars. In, in the U.S., five-star ranking basically exists so that we can have someone who outranks any British officer. Like, for real, as far as I understand it, there's no there's no such thing, thing as a five-star during peacetime. Five stars exist because, and I think there's good reason for it, and I don't want to see a big argument about it in the comments, Americans don't like British being in command of their troops. Because we've seen what happens when British officers and historically were in command of troops from like Australia, like we're not putting America like yeah, <laughs> maybe it's not fair. Maybe that kind of thing wouldn't happen now. But Americans basically created five star. It, it only exists so that you can put someone in a position to be in, you know, over an international uh, allied officer. But uh, yeah, so w what I was trying to get to is Panzer General 2 recreates a thing where it's it's uh, your superior briefing you, and the American superior is the most boring and generic out of them, and it's probably just because I'm an American, so they, they can't go with a really interesting regional um, 
stereotype, so they just give you genera man, <laughs> and I'd rather have generic British officer or generic Russian or generic German telling what to do. But uh, yeah, so the idea is that the uh, the Germans are in for a big surprise because they haven't fought Americans, and I will tell you that when we get into this. My memory of the American, the little micro mini American North Africa campaign is that the first mission is really easy and the second mission is pretty nasty. So in order to see the second mission, though, we need to get a minor victory because if we get a major victory, we just skip past the second mission. So we are going to play for a minor victory and see what happens. Operation Torch. They showed me the date and year, which I just kind of forgot to get. So we've only got two scenarios, so it's not worth getting too hyper excited about what our core units are going to be. But we have room for one more core unit. Um, oh, we don't have. Yeah, we need to take an airfield on the first turn, or we're in trouble. But our core units have. We've got one P thirty uh, P thirty eight lightning fighter, and uh, we got a tactical bomber. So we could go either fighter or bomber as our as our last core unit, but we only get one, and then the next battle we get one more. So probably oh, lethal feline is playing ready or not? By the way, <laughs> so you know. We should probably get a fighter, because having it get a little experience in this battle will be more useful. And then in the next, assuming we get one core unit in the next battle, we should probably get a um, a bomber. And then that will get carry us through our two-scenario micro-mini campaign. P-38. Uh, I don't know anything about the P-40 Warhawk, but it appears to be not as good. I don't think we fight any air in this battle. Because this, this battle serves as the, like, if you are an American gamer and the first thing you do is go play Western Europe as the Americans, that's your, this, this, it's not a tutorial per se, but this, this in difficulty is comparable to City Barani, where we fight as the British. I don't know why they assume no one will pay, play as the Russians first, but the Russians have, like, the hardest scenario, I think, arguably in the game as the first scenario in their campaign. But with the British and the Americans, they go a more traditional route of the easiest campaign or scenario being the first one. Either way, uh, 11 air attack, 16 air attack. I need new glasses. I see. So this thing has better uh, initiative. Well, I think in the next fight, we're going to, I think we get P-51s in the next scenario, and I'm going to want P-51s anyway. Even if, th even if we got the P-47 Thunderbolt, I'd rather have that than the P-38 Lightning, I think. Alright, let's buy a Warhawk. Because it's it's got worse attack and it's got higher initiative. And initiative is really important in air combat in this game. Also, it's cheaper. Air Defense 11. It just has worse stats and everything except initiative. And initiative is really important. There's nowhere to place this kind of unit now. That is true. Okay, actually, so we need to capture an airfield and then wait a turn and see what happens. You've got full fuel. Oh. P-38 is going to do some... I guess P-38 must have really good ground attack. Expected to kill. Oh, this is Vichy French infantry over here. These are not even Germans. The city is considered German, but the unit that's actually holding it is Vichy French, which I guess is not a it's not a separate faction, which would be why it's. Uh... Got it. You guys have entrenchment. Well, yeah, they're not even entrenched. It's like they had no idea Americans were coming. If they shoot down a B-25 <laughs> with their recon uh, cars, I will be annoyed. What am I going to do with you guys? 
So we have the whole scenario to capture Marrakesh. You know, I'm riding on the Marrakech Express. It's taking me to Marrakech. Had a parody version of that, if you can call it that, in high school with another guy in my uh, biology class, the Meristem, which is, I think it's part of plant anatomy. <laughs> we would say, you know, I'm riding on the Meristem Express. It's taking me to Meristem. On aboard this train. Oh, darn it. Yeah, so we need to get an air an airfield toot suite. Oh, these are uh, French mountain infantry. That's right. I've got a couple of French uh, units here. U.S. engineer. That's so. That was probably a mistake, uh, a minor mistake. That's not really going to hurt us any. But if I wanted, I wanted to buy a core unit. I can't buy core French units. I don't believe. Although, as you can see. The French have fighters we can buy, which is pretty awesome. The French have a level bomber, which looks to me like a World War One era thing. The French have... Yeah, the French have a whole slew of, like, full-on stuff that they can get. Although it's really only with the airplanes and the tanks that you see anything uh, that looks uh, unique to each faction. This is just, like, regular old French infantry. Oh, I can buy French infantry. Wait a second. So this is French mountain infantry. But I can't buy that. I can only buy uh, partisans and French regular infantry. Interesting. But stupid. All right. Theoretically, I feel like you guys should be better than my... Eh, no, same difference. Because these guys have no entrenchment, I'm just going to go... Or very little... Rugged defense! Fuck me! That's really poor luck. Entrenchment of one gives very low chance of getting hit with rugged uh, rugged defense. But that's really going to... That's going to mean we waste a whole turn needing to get elite replacements for them. Because they have one star. We don't want to just... Like, dilute their experience. So that, that was... Basically just a really poor roll for us. Now you have entrenchment of one. Let's see if we can get the exact same bad luck to occur twice. Nope. Although we still took shitty losses. Anyway, we will see. I don't think they will let me buy air on this turn. Uh, because we just took the... Uh, but we'll see. What if I try to buy a French fighter? We've got enough prestige to burn that I could be silly about this, but... Well, you know what? I need. I do actually need to have a save game for this American campaign, even if I just keep, like, one file. So let's buy... Let's see if we... Let's see if I, I've got one core, three auxiliary. Can I buy a French fighter as a core unit? They're pretty terrible, by the way. Okay, initiative 5 and 5. I guess that's about the same as what the American fighters had. Before I get too full of how awesome American combat fighters are. But let's buy their most their, their fanciest fighter. Okay, it won't let me place it either. So we'll wait a turn and see what happens. If I got anything left to... No, I don't have any, any units left to... I mean, the other thing I could do is just buy... And this is probably what I should do, is just get a... Uh, get another tank. Uh, you know, that's the that's the actual move. Let's get another tank. 
I think if I buy a French... Well, we did just say, if I buy a French tank, I don't think it'll count as a core unit. But it would be fun if I could have a French army tank rolling around with our core units the entire uh, campaign. So let's see if we buy one. Maybe it won't let me place anything on the first turn. That would make sense. We don't actually, like... The, the Germans haven't had a turn to retake any cities yet. We basically haven't had any time pass where we hold this stuff. So maybe we just can't buy anything on this first turn. Nope, we're allowed to buy this. All right, well, we'll change our mind and we'll end the turn. Okay, that's kind of an ugly start. The German armor is coming out to beat up our boys. Now can I buy an airplane? It's not going to let me do it. Okay, so I don't quite know what's going on there, but it does seem like what I want to do is go back a turn. I would normally be uh, min-maxing quite this much, but it's annoying me now that the game rules didn't be working the way I thought they would. So we'll buy uh, on. So so we'll buy on our first turn a new tank to be part of our core force. And that will also give us a little bit more firepower because now the German uh, tank is going to attack. That's not where I meant to put it. Ah, damn it. Jeez. I made a complete mess of this, but it's okay. We won't be spending that much time as the Americans, so let's, uh, let's enjoy the time we have as the Americans by prolonging things and being incompetent. So we're going to buy uh, an M4. The M4 is a motorway connecting London to the south of Wales. Ask me another one, sir. Maybe the game will punish us by having a more devastating uh, attack by the German tanks here. I don't remember, but I feel like that was the same. Last time we suppressed one, which means nothing. This time we did nothing. All right, so we'll call that a video and just kind of accept the fact that it, I don't think we get to build uh, air core units here. But uh, when we come back next time, guys, we will um, hopefully uh, have a little bit more success and a little bit less of me talking about Christmas. Thanks for watching.